Hello and welcome to PME's live Facebook event. Welcome to you all wherever you are. There might have been a little bit of a hiccup there at the beginning, so we might be a little bit delayed. So this is take two in actual fact, but welcome to you all. We were saying Nimish a little grin there behind the camera. <laughs> He's having a little giggle. <laughs> he won't be laughing later when we've airbrushed him, though, to be absolutely honest, and he thinks I'm joking. <laughs> This is number eight we were talking earlier, so I really can't actually believe how many of these we've actually done now. Uh, and it's great to be back again this time round. And this time we're going to be looking at showing you how to use an airbrush. So wherever you are in the world tuning in, it's great to see you. And hopefully you'll pick up some hints and tips while we're doing the airbrushing. So what have we got? We've got Nimish behind the screen for us and we've got Pat down here who's going to be feeding over any information. We've got Samir who's actually upstairs. Now he's going to be typing away and replying to you and answering your questions. He's going to feed us some information as well and we're going to be doing some shout outs. Pat's going to be giving me some information as and when we possibly can. So if you don't hear us do a shout out we're really sorry in advance and if we don't answer your questions here that's because Samir's already been answering for them upstairs to you. So hopefully we'll have a, a great hour thereabouts or something like that. You'll be able to learn lots of hints and tips on airbrushing uh, from some very basic stuff to something still very basic, but giving you a really good result. Uh, Nimish, nearly called you Hinnish then. Nimish has <laughs> shown you some of the cakes just over here. So we're actually going to be looking at some cloud effects and some sky and some trees as well. Uh, we'll also be showing you how to create something if you've got the trees in there. So you've got a sugar pasted area and you're using that as a, a bit of a guideline as well. And then we're going to be using cutters to create something like the horse, if that's what you want to do, or then to turn it into a unicorn. Unicorns are very trendy at the moment. So I still want to keep calling <laughs> Nimish. Nimish <laughs> is going to be coming in close at certain points in time. So I'm just going to grab my airbrush so, so that you can have a, a quick little look. Uh, basically, if I just turn it round so, so that you can see, uh, we're all plugged in and ready to go. This is the lead that goes to my actual airbrush and my valve, and we'll show you a little bit more about that. That's what creates the airflow through our airbrush. And this is actually airbrush itself, just in the front here. I'll just take that off there because I pulled it out as I went to remove my actual pen as i'm going to call it now i'm just going to undo the end here this is actually protecting the needle which is very very delicate so if i just take the end off and this is where nimish is going to be tuning right and you can can you see that i hope you can i'm just pulling that slowly back you can see how fragile that is so it really does need careful looking after and very careful cleaning as well so we'll be doing that later just placing the end back on there securely to help protect it. We've got our well. I do have a lid that I'll be putting on there once that's actually filled up, or not filled to the top, but just a little bit in there. And my lever that I just gently pull backwards and forwards that just operates that needle. Now, it is a single-fed gravity airbrush because the well's on the top. And then we've got my very nice long length of tube that goes with that. And we've already got a shout out there, Pat, so go for it while I'm just filling up my, my airbrush maybe with some colour. How does that sound? Sounds good to me, Paula. Mm. <coughs> um, we've actually got quite a lot. Oh, OK. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? Didn't take long. <laughs> and, and very international. And our very first one is Marilyn Saunders, and she says, Hi, I'm from hello. Adelaide, South Australia. Oh, wow. Hello. That's great to know that Australia's in here. And she yeah. says, Thank you for this tutorial. Oh, hopefully you'll, um, you'll enjoy there's, it. There's uh, Nerol from Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Hello, Cape Town. Hello, Nerol. And Maritza, also from Cape Town. Wow. South Africa, of course. Yeah, lovely. Brilliant. Um, Jackie Jones from Bridge End in South Wales. Oh, from everywhere. Hello, everywhere. South Wales. This is great. Um, lovely. Helena says hello from Sweden. Hello, Sweden. Hello, Helena. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Stevenson says afternoon from the wet highlands of Scotland. Oh, Bonnie Scotland, as always. <laughs> And uh, Geertje says hello from the Netherlands. Hello, Geertje from the Netherlands. Norma says hello from Grimsby. 
Grimsby. <laughs> Very international is Grimsby. <laughs> so a, a lot of um, a lot of good wishes and, and good luck. Oh, that's great. And that, that's really good to know. And thank you. So, yep, just thumbs up, smiley faces. We really love to get the interaction from you. And as soon as we can, like I say, we'll be answering your questions and interacting back with you. It's really great to have your support, whether that's just that you love PME products and you love us or whether you're an international or one of our local trade customers as well. Or just a follower. So what I'm first of all going to do is I'm going to switch my airbrush on and just show you a little bit about it. So it's going to get a bit noisier now and I'm just going to talk a little bit louder. Just going to pop my lid on. I've added some drops in and we'll show you to do that a little bit later on in more detail so we can just get underway. Now I'm just going to pull my lever back and from a distance so you'll have a, a widish line. So this is how easy it is to use the airbrush in a bit closer slightly narrower line and then in even closer and you can see we've taken the lines down that's how easy it is all I'm doing is pulling back the lever so if you've got an airbrush sitting in your cupboard that you've had for years and never used do not be afraid to just get the airbrush out and go for it because that's what you need to do and we're going to make sure that you're kind of under starters orders with it all so I'm just going to bring in this and we're going to look at how to create just some cloud effects. That's really simple and very easy. And you can do that just by taking a piece of kitchen towel and ripping it basically. And that will give you a little bit of a, a shape that you can kind of tear into a cloud. And this can then be held against the cake. You can rip just underneath here as well if you want to. Or you can leave it as it is. Now for me, trying to hold that around the cake isn't easy. So what I tend to do is I tend to attach a, a wire onto there. Now this is something Silvio and I, and I think Silvio said, well, what about a wire when he was here? Uh, so we did that and then stuck some tape on the end. So Silvio, you're in Italy and you're watching. Hello, good to see you. Uh, hopefully he is watching. And you can see we've just taped it on the back there, flip it over, and then this can be held across your cake very easily. Keeps you clean, but it means, say, you can bend it around the cake as well. So that's what we're going to be doing just in a minute. So Nimish has got that on there. Now, if you want it looking a little bit more real cloudy, so something like this, for example, all I've done is just been a bit creative, and I've just drawn myself a cloud shape so that I can then cut around the cloud shape so that I've got a very specific shape instead. So you can either rip and tear if you don't feel creative or if you feel up to it, just draw a little cloud and then cut round it and then you're ready to stick onto the back. So that's what we're going to do. A little bit of tape on there. I'm actually, I put my gloves on because I was doing that little bit of airbrushing but I think it might have been a bit premature really because it was just a quick show so we were under starter's order. So a little bit of masking tape onto here. Now the other good thing about using a little bit of wire is that it's not just flexible around the cake when you need it but for example if you want it to be a bit bendy on the cake you can just twist the wire so you can kind of negotiate around where you've torn if that makes sense. So you can get it to really bend which is always a handy thing to be able to do and then just masking tape it down so you can kind of be flexible by using the wire as well so I think it's great to use the wire to be honest I think it's really really good so that's then created some cloud for ourselves so now we can start looking at adding those bits of cloud whichever ones you want to do whether that's ripped up or an actual drawn cloud onto our cake so let me move those bits away I'm going to bring my cake in and there it is, pre-coated of course, that's nice and dry now. And then I'm going to bring in my airbrush. Now I've put in a little tiny bit of yellow colouring and that's this one that I've used, that one there. And I'm then going to add in a little bit of orange in a minute onto that. So I'm going to have it look a bit like a sunset. So you don't have to just use a blue colour because it's sky. There's all sorts of colours in the sky, including some oranges, yellows and pinks as well. So here we go, just hold it round a little bit so you can kind of get the idea. So you should be able to see, now Nimish, if you don't think you can see very well, just kind of give me a yell and I can adjust. So you start to see it's building up a little bit. 
and then just down and around. So I'm hoping the yellow is showing okay. I'm going to add in a, a little bit of orange and then we're going to go into a little bit of blue as well. I've got my lid stuck now. There we go. So I'm going to add in some orange. So I'll just show you so you can see what that one is. Oh, and we've got a shout out. Pat's waving the board in the air for me. Go for it, Pat. I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still travelling the world here, Paula. Oh, wow. So we've got uh, Marlene from Belgium. Lovely. Uh, I'm carrying on airbrushing as well. I'm saying hello at the same time. Multitasking what? female, you see. <laughs> what, whatever works for you. Pat might need to shout now. <laughs> Um, Mariana says hello from Rome. Hello from Rome. Uh, Birgit says hello from Austria. Oh, wow, lovely. Kieran says hi from Leicester. Hello, Kieran. Joseph says hello from Hong Kong. Hello, Joseph. Is that blossom cake by any chance? And Kuma says hello from Japan. Oh, lovely. Hello, Kuma in Japan. That's great. Um, have I got time for a message or would you like me to come back later? No, go for it, Pat, because I'm just loading up some blue so that it shows. I'm a bit worried that's not showing too well on the camera, so I'm going to do some blue now. So oh. go for it. Yep. Okay. Um, and this yeah. is from Donna Marie Breeden. She says, hi, I've watched you a few times, but never said hello. Oh, yeah. From Smethwick, just out from Birmingham. Oh, lovely. I have just, like yesterday, brought an airbrush. Oh, that's perfect timing. And, well, hopefully. Um, I just sent you a couple of kisses. Oh, kisses back. That's lovely. Thank you. Well, hopefully there'll be some hints and tips here that you'll be able to kind of pick up on and be able to make use of. So at the moment, I'm just kind of popping the colour in. I just want to show you how easy that is. So just into the top, give it a little squeeze. Now it's quite um, a good push that you need to do. This is so it doesn't go running out everywhere and you can be quite controlled with it then. And it's always better to, to add in small amounts and then top it up. Now we've got the lid, so that means to say you're not gonna cover yourself in the colour as well, which has been known by myself when I've managed to not remember to put the lid on. I thought I'd better mention that because at this point in time, Hinnish hasn't got a clue about that. And he could be wearing the colour. He knows now and he's acknowledged it. He's, he's concerned, I can tell. <laughs> so we're just gonna work our way round, adding in a little bit of extra colour. Just gonna bend it round a little bit. There we go, which is why it's so handy with the wire. Now you should see this much better, I think. There we go, that's much better. So just a, a little bit of colour, and then just a little bit like so, just to start to build up. I'm going to go over again, there we are. Now sometimes you can thin it down as well if that's what you want to do. Just light, yell Hinnish at me, Nimish even, I've done it again. You're going to think I'm doing it on purpose. I'm not, honestly. It's because Hinnish was sorting out our computers yesterday. That's why. Again, just a little bit of a light pull, hardly using a little lever at all, just pulling it back gradually. Just down a little bit more. And you can go lighter, darker, easier to build up very gradually, very soft. And then we're just coming around. So I'm not gonna go into that yellow because I don't want to end up with a different color that I don't want. There we go. Just a little bit down there. And a little bit more building it up. So I'll just turn that round a little bit. Go a little bit darker, just so that you can see a bit easier. There you go. A little bit more there. Just thought if I go a bit heavier, you can at least start to see that building up for yourselves. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there with my blue switch off that particular airbrush just pop it back in the rest always make sure that you do use the rest on your airbrushes it is important to really look after them and make sure that they're looked after properly because they're an investment at the end of the day and if it's something that's been sitting in your cupboard and you're not using it you need to make sure you know that you are looking after it and using it properly and that means cleaning it properly as well and we tend to use the, the cleaner to do that, just to make sure, it's like any electrical things, 
and any piece of equipment that's got a colour going through it, you just need to make sure that it is actually really working well. So the next thing, we're just going to look at creating some heels, a bit like what uh, you've already seen on the cake over here. Uh, and to do that, I've got some parchment paper, which I've just folded into three, taken a strip of it, and then I've just done a bit more ripping and tearing. So I've done three different sizes so that I can turn one of these upside down around my cake and that's going to kind of create hills in the distance. And then I've got another one which I'm going to wrap around the base of the cake and that's going to give me some hills a little bit nearer. And then I've got a very thin strip and that's going to give me my near near information so that I can put some trees right in front of us or some little bits of grass sticking up. And all I've done is just rip it. Um, I don't really know that I need to show you how to rip the paper because I think you can all manage to do that. But if in doubt, just give it a little rip just like that. Or use your scissors. I like to rip, I have to admit, because it gives you a much softer edge and softer line. But it's whatever works for you at the end of the day. So there we go. I'm going to bring my cake in again now. There we go. And I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to hold it upside down around the top of the cake. And that's where it's going to be positioned. Helps Paula if you've got some colour in your airbrush when you're doing that. So this could be a good time to show you just how to change the colour and give it a little wash out as well. So, for example, let's bring this one in here. I've got my loaded up round here. So just yell if you can't see, okay? You should be all right there. So lid off the top. Whatever excess colour you've got, which is a little bit of blue in here, just tip that out into a little pot. We'll just recycle that. Then you've got the option of a little bit of water, first of all, to clean it with. Uh, normally use a squeezy bottle or there's a little pipette as well that you'll find in with the airbrush, which is like that. So you can use that to kind of get in there and clean with the water as well. And then generally tend to tip that out into another bowl. Generally got some water in, give the end a little bit of a swoosh into there as well. And then some cleaner and some kitchen towel. This helps to, to keep the airbrush in good condition and lubricated. But it also means to say that you can get rid of those excess colours if you don't want to keep them quite often it's a good idea just to to kind of keep them in there and just mix your colours so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean now if you've used water this just helps to remove the water out of when you're airbrushing as well because you don't want water splattering onto your cake and then what you can do is just chuck away any excess oh I can see Pat's got another little shout out there Ready when you are there, Pat. I'm still carrying on though, if that's okay. Okay. Um, there we go. So first of all, just to let you know, we've actually got so many shout outs. Wow. That we may not be able to include them all. So oh, sorry everybody then. We'll do sorry. our best though, but thank you. Um, we'll, we'll kind of keep popping in when yep, we can. Yep, sounds good. Okay, so Deborah Lee says hello from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. And Ashley Masters is in Florida, USA. Oh, wow, that's great. Uh, Prasanna is hello from Alberton. Hello. Ash oh, there's another Ashley from Florida. Oh, wow, popular name. Uh, we're in Blackpool. Uh, with, Blackpool, um, oh, great. With a hello from Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Uh, Maxine McLeod. Ooh. Says hi from Nova Scotia, Canada. Oh, hello, Maxine McLeod. And Hanin is uh, saying hello from Saudi Arabia. Ooh. And uh, Tamrin, another um, from South Africa. Oh, that's great. So we'll take them in, in batches. Yeah, that sounds really, really good. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. And I hope that you kind of carry on watching, because don't forget, we've got um, a lovely horse to do a little bit later on, once we've kind of covered these simple basic techniques just to get you going with your airbrushing. I've run out of hands. I need an extra thumb. Oh, if you could. Lovely. Thank you, Nanesh. Perfect. Did a good job there, didn't they? <laughs> so I've just used that larger piece of uh, parchment paper and I'm just going to create a few kind of hilly effects just around here. Just turning around. Give it a little spin round. Doesn't matter if it moves round. 
And here we go. There we go. Round to the front. Ignore my writing that's on there, everybody. And it doesn't matter if it mixes in with a bit of that blue, because we'll just get a very nice different colour going on from there, which is great. So I'm switching that off. I will keep switching off in between times. So then I've got my second kind of colouring going on. So I'm going to be darkening everything down a little bit. So that's going to sit just across there to give me a slightly different look. And you can twist and move it around so that you can easily change where the hills are. And before I do that, I'm just going to take one little bit of darker green and I'm going to add that in with my existing green. And then I'm just going to use my pipette to mix it together a little bit. Just going to squeeze it in and out just a little bit. So just a little bit into there. I don't want too much. If it turns out I haven't put enough in, I can just add more. So just give it a little mix in like that. But sometimes you find it doesn't mix the colours. So just a little like that, that gets it mixed, which is ideal. Pop the lid back on. See, I'm already getting into a bit of a mess here as well, which is why it's always a good idea to put some gloves on. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to uh, just make sure I've got hold of that again. There we go. And we're ready. And off we go. So always make sure that your lead isn't tangled up at all, because you just want to be careful. As soon as you get any buckles in it, you may find that you actually get blockages and then it might start to burst with the colour in there and kind of like splurt out then as soon as it kind of gets caught up in there. So just lightly aim it. I've got a fair distance away, but you can see a little bit just starts to build up there. And then you can move it again and then you've got a slightly different shading and look going on as you come round. Just keep it moving round and change it. There we go, and that's probably going to be quite nice there. So I'm going to switch off again, and then I'm going to do that last distance one that we want to do. We're all going to show you as well how you could spray and splatter on the lily as well. Um, and I think Pat's got another shout out for us as well. And are you okay there, Nimish, at the moment? You're getting, getting what you need to. He's given me a thumbs up, so that's all good. I'm going to carry on spraying if that's okay. Up, up to you. Is this a good time for shout outs? Yeah, no, you that's perfect. Yeah, go for it then, Pat. Okay, we have uh, Shan Patel, a big up from Headstone Lane. Oh, lovely. Hello. And uh, Brenda from the Netherlands. Hello, Brenda. Tanya from South Australia. Hello, Tanya. Suzanne from South Wales. Oh, great. Another from South Wales, David. And uh, another one from South Africa, Marisha. Oh, that's really, really good. Oh, that's wonderful. So I'm just putting in an extra little bit of colour with that bottom one. And then what I'm going to do is add in a lot darker green in here. So that's just about used it up, which is what I was trying to do. Uh, so that I'm not continually tipping into little pots. Because otherwise I'm a bit concerned I might, with kind of quite restricted space up here, I might tip. Tip that over and tip it away, which is not what I want to do. That won't work. I'm trying to put the lid on the bottle that goes onto the well. Oh, I don't know. That would say you just can't get the star off these days, can you? <laughs> so there we are. So I'm going to give it a little twist round. And again, you can now see a little bit of a, a different colour coming in here. Give it a little spoon round. And generally what I tend to do is infill a little bit later. I go over the top with a different kind of colour, just where I... I think it needs it to add in a little bit of shading along the way and that's your chance to get a little bit creative then. Generally I would tape it but for speed so that you're not watching me tape and untape everything I'm just kind of leaving it loose on here but if you're doing this at home you're going to probably want to just add a little bit of masking tape in on there just to make it a little bit more secure. So I've taken that off there. I'm going to add in a small amount around the back and on the bottom, like so, there we are, and then I'm just going to add in a little bit of a, a brown into here as well, just 
to darken down a little bit. There we go. And again, you can give it all a, a bit of a mix if that's what you want to do. Always have yourself some kitchen towel handy as well just to help keep your area nice and clean too. Now it could be quite a good idea to put some of that down on your unit as well before you start. And it's quite useful because then you can, if you need to, you can kind of pre-spray uh, as much as you want to as well. So just pop that on so you can give a test for your colour as well if that's what you want to do. And then the nearer area, start to see just kind of coming in there so that's darkened down our color so all the airbrush colors kind of really can mix in together really well don't be afraid to just mix them as you would do with your color wheel generally anyway which is a good thing handy to know and if I've uh, used too much I just put it into one of my little bowls and then I've got it for a later point in time and that will keep absolutely fine so just a little bit around around there and I might put in a little bit of extra shading in and around on there as well okay so let me have a little look how we're doing we're not doing too badly I'd like now to try and put in a little bit of kind of hedgy type things I think so I'm going to take this color out and we're going to look at adding in kind of hedge type thing I think I don't want it too dark at the moment I'm just going to put that into there. I'm also going to change my gloves because they're getting pretty yucky. And we've got a, a question here from Pat as well. While I'm changing gloves, she's <laughs> zooming over here as fast as she can. Um, so, Paula, this is from Samina. Hello, Samina. And she asks, could you use a pin? Um, we're kind of assuming she means to add the tissue, where I think you've got the tissue oh, on I the see. wire. Well, pins can always be a bit dodgy, can't they, Pat? So... Um, a little bit safer to use something like um, a masking tape on the paper. Uh, if you use a pin, there's always that risk that if it goes into the cake, it could uh, kind of create a bit of an issue, which is not what we want to do. Uh, so just always be very careful. Plus the fact if it gets lost, uh, you don't know where that's going to end up. So just, just be wary and ideally, no, not something we'd like to do. Always need to kind of think about good practice and safety and all that type of thing as well. So now I'm going to get myself a nice clean piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to have a, it's going to look a bit strange, but I'm going to do this anyway, which is what I do, kind of to create kind of hedgerow. Just pretend you're shaking a lot and just kind of go with it. Wiggle the airbrush backwards and forwards, which I know sounds a bit strange, but it does work. And I'm hardly touching the actual lever, but that's generally what I tend to do. And give it a little wiggle as you go. Make sure it's kind of operating as you need it to. I actually preferred the colour that was coming out first there. But not to worry, if you don't like it, you can thin it down. I'm going to add in a, a little bit of brown now just to change my tone. Oh dear. Nimish, you're covered in airbrush colour. That's a shame. <laughs> we were joking beforehand because there was um, a festival that you'd attended recently, wasn't there? And he'd got covered. It's called Holy, I think it was. And he got covered in paint, so I said that we were going to do something similar today. And it would appear that we have. I'm so sorry. Not. Never mind. <laughs> so I'm going to have a, a little jiggle now onto my cake. So it'll look like I'm shaking, but I'm not actually, honestly. You don't want to get in too close. But close enough to do what needs to happen. So hopefully I can see I've stopped talking and then you can just bring it up that's what happens if you're getting too close so that's why you've got to be careful just keep it jiggling keep going along just going to give it a little there we go to make sure that we're kind of doing what we need to do that's how you're creating and then you can just cut up and across 
and that will kind of start to define where you've got your hillsides and your hedge row. Give it a little go. If I tip it up too much, because I haven't got that much in, and my angle at the moment is a bit strange, it's kind of like not feeding it through. So just be careful. Make sure you have got enough in there, in the well, as you're going along. I'm just gonna speed it up by not jiggling and just very lightly pulling it. It gives it a flat, flatter look, but it speeds it up as well. Because I know we haven't got time for you to just watch me create little patterns all around the cake all day. I'll speed things up a little bit. And it's just about understanding the touch. And that's why it's important to just have a little practice before you get started. Don't worry about anything like that because you can actually use the airbrush to just create something a little bit different as you're going along. Now where it's a bit wet, it's a bit difficult, but we'll get in there, there we go. There we go, so that just kind of gives you an idea. Now if there's any areas that you're not too happy with, we can go over those. And again, just kind of bring that down on the long. There we go. And up and along as well. There we go. Okay, so, how are we doing? I can't see Pat in the distance. Oh, there's a shout out. That's good, because I'm just going to have a little clean of this airbrush while you're doing your shout out, Pat. There we okay, go. Okay, I was trying to choose the right moment. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was going into my own world there, if I'm honest, a little bit. Oh, dear. <laughs> You were enjoying yourself. I was. I, I was not playing, though, Pat. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first of all, this is um, Elise says hello from Romania. Oh, hello, Elise in Romania. My goodness, we're getting everybody from everywhere. And Kathleen says hi from High Wycombe. Not as glamorous as South Africa. <laughs> But I'm loving the video. Oh, I'm still appreciating that everybody's watching, wherever you are. That's really good to know. And also, uh, um, hello from Malaysia, Ooh. from Arabella. Hello, Arabella in uh, Malaysia. Oh, that's really, really good. Wonderful. There we go. Right, I'm just going to switch, switch off there. I'm also going to change gloves again as well because I'm getting through them. I'm sure I wasn't this messy earlier when I was getting organised, but there we go. So make sure you've got plenty of gloves so that you can keep where you need to be and have a little clean round on your cake as well. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for a second and then we're just going to bring in some more ideas that you could do. Sorry, Nimish, with um, some cutters, etc. I'm going to slide that over there for now. And I'm just going to place these on here so that you've got some ideas of what else you can do. Now, when you were kind of looking over there, or Hinnish, Nimish, even again, God dear, was looking, uh, you can see we've kind of used trees as well. So one of the things I like to do is actually cut out shapes and then pop little wires just inside and onto them. And then you can use them angled again on the cake to be able to create different images. So in the distance or near and far, etc., just by airbrushing around them. Uh, you can create a sun area if you want and then kind of infill around it. Or if you were doing something like the moon, uh, you could airbrush the area black and just hold this across it so that you can see what you can achieve by that. In actual fact, what I could do is just quickly do this on the top section and then you might be able to just get an idea of that so everybody can understand what we're saying with that one exactly. So let's do a nice orange colour quickly onto there. I'll just go into that one. I think that's the orangey one. Or have I picked up? Oh, I've picked up yellow again. Go. Don't know me oranges from the yellows. There we go. You should still be able to, to see though. There we go. So if we just kind of like use the top of the cake as a bit of a, a practice, you should be able to get a good view. So we can kind of round about it. There you go. So you can see you get this lovely kind of area. So that could be a nice moon going on in there. So just by kind of recutting into the circle, you can kind of then, if we use what would be the moon, 
you can kind of get a slightly different effect going on with that one as well. And then if I just show you so you can see the tree, just to get a bit of an idea, if I turn that one around that way and then we'll do that on the side of the cake in a second. And then just move again. And then if I move it again, you can start to see how it builds up gradually. But we're going to do this on the side of the cake now. And, oh, whoops, I've hit the wrong button. <laughs> I'm not in the, uh, the orange colour. So I'm just going to lose that one there. There we go. So giving that a little sprout. So make sure you've got some water there to keep everything clean. Make sure you've got your kitchen towel as well so that you can kind of keep tidy. Laughing at. <laughs> Maybe she's having a giggle here. I think it was the water situation that I just created. <laughs> So I'm going to use some dark green. I'm going to put that into there now. Oh no, look what I've done. I've dropped the ring off the bottle into the... Soon sorted, there we go. So just pop that into there. Now I've just... Normally I'd use the stand and the rest to do this, so make sure that you do that. I've just brought this in so that you can uh, see easier and that uh, my friend here can manage to get the, the camera where it needs to be. So just to put that back in the rest for a little bit. Oh, Pat's got another shout out. Now, just before we do that shout out, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold the trees just in position so it looks like they're near or far and airbrushed around them. And I don't know what size I'm gonna do, but as we do that shout out, that's what I'm gonna do, if that's okay, Pat. Well, Pat. You, you, you can yep. carry on and I'll do the shout oh, out. Oh, that's perfect then. Oh, okay, well, no, you can, you can, do you want to do more all together, do you? You're, you're, you're kind of holding on to these ones, okay. <laughs> You can hold on to them if you want to. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to do some trees. There we go. Got it. Now I'm trying very hard to make sure that everybody can kind of see this really well. If I'm honest, I, I can't see as much as I thought I was going to when I was considering it all. Just give us some little shadows. The trees. This could be hedges again. But it just gives you an idea of what you can do. And then we can just go over the top again. And this is just one easy way of, of creating some trees. I'm only using the airbrush very lightly. I'm hardly pulling the trigger at all. There you go, so that's just building up a little bit. There we go, I'll turn around. There we go, so you've got an idea of where you're at now and what you're getting. So you've got this kind of nice image building up and going along onto there as well. And just by kind of going in very close, doing the wiggly thing and think of your tree shapes that you could do, you can just kind of create a little bit of a pattern just by wiggling around the tree. Again, in close, kind of back down, kind of tree shape, and that just kind of gives you an idea of what you can create. Kind of leaning over that way, because trees aren't always perfect, are they? And then this could be a much smaller tree. There we go. Just a little bit of a wiggle. Okay, so ready when you are, Pat. I'm not going to go all the way around, just giving a bit of an idea of what the trees could look like. There we go. Okay? Yes. I just thought I would wait so that if you needed to move that one out the way and get ready with your next one. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yes? Yes, that's what I should do. Um, hold on, I just lost one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, South Africa's definitely with you because I've got Ooh. another one from South Africa, uh, Karika Franz. And um, then we go to Mexico. Don't mind me. To uh, Mexico. Uh, Mexico. Wow, that's the first, I think, Mexico. And that's Bevis. Oh, lovely. And um, Margaret Simmons says, I think it's time to buy an airbrush. Oh, that's good news. <laughs> You'll have the best of fun. Yes. So you, you've obviously inspired her, that's for sure. Well, that's really good. And um, that's, oh. <laughs> while, while, while you're um, 
just cleaning up a little bit. Just cleaning up a little bit. Yeah. Um, we, we actually have a question. Are you okay to ask? Yep, that's question lovely. While you're doing yep, that? No, that's perfect. Yeah, this is from uh, Donna Marie uh, Breeden, and I think it's a, a very good question because okay. I think it's something that people need to be reminded of over and over again. Okay. And she asks, can you use watered down food colours? Or does it have to be special airbrush bottles? It does have to be special airbrush colours, I'm afraid. Um, what you don't want to do, that needle that I was showing you at the beginning, which is so important, um, that can very easily get damaged. And by trying to put through a colour that isn't meant to be in the actual airbrush itself, that can actually damage it quite a bit. Um, so you do need to be very careful um, and I know you might think oh we know added extra expense because I'll be getting extra colours that I might not use uh, it is well worth it it will help look after your airbrush and it is important that you do that definitely you, you're kind of investing in them so it's worth looking after them no matter what okay so now what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly show you some splatter uh, on some lilies. I'm going to move this out and hopefully you've got a bit of an idea on how easy it is, ignoring my kind of odd splurge there, but how you can cover them up as well with uh, a little bit of a, a scenic kind of countryside look on there. You've got the idea, I think, what you can do. Uh, so I'm just going to swap that away for a second and bring in uh, a lily so that you can have a, an idea. Nimish is just showing you there some of the lilies with the splatter on. Just going to bring this one in. Now you can colour it up totally the airbrush all over the lily let me just get some pink into there and i've just been doing one in pink here just to show you how easy it is so this is so quick and easy so if you've got a white lily and you don't know what color you're going to need uh, a little bit of airbrushing onto there does the job no problem so that's the pink that i've just added in there so that you can see and I've just used some kitchen towel and I've just threaded through uh, some of the bits and pieces. So I've got a, a bud, I've got the pistol and I've actually got the stamens and I've just created a, a little hole in the kitchen towel and threaded the stamens through the hole, which I've just made that I now can't see. So I'm just gonna thread it through again. I'll give it a wiggle this time so that I can actually see the hole, there we go. And that just keeps the bits that you want white or not sprayed out of the way. And it just keeps things a bit neater and tidier if that's what you want to do. And they pull through. And then you can just colour your petals. So I do the front and the back. And I generally tend to hold it over these so they're all getting airbrushed at the same time. So just pop that on. Just a reasonable distance away. Just a light coating onto the back there. So you can see how easily that goes on and when it comes to drying just sit them on the side but we're just going to do the front there so again nice and easy way of coating a blank cake or a blank area very easily and very quickly from white to whatever color that you decide that you need to have now for the splatter we can just bring in the sand brush here for ourselves and we can actually, we've got a little bit of splatter on here at the moment, but we're going to make a lot more on there. And we're going to do that by just easily altering the valve. Now, if you remember, I mentioned the valve on the side. If I just bring that round, you'll be able to see it. And this just alters the airflow. And that's all we're going to do. And by altering the airflow, it won't flow quite so easily. And that will give us a nice splatter effect. At this point in time, I think Nimish just pulled a face there. He's already covered in airbrush colour. He knows very well that more airbrush colour is headed his way. You're being very brave. <laughs> he had no idea what he was in for today. He knows now he'll never want to do this again. <laughs> oh dear, I'm not really laughing. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to push that on. Can you hear the noise? It's a little bit noisier because it's just been twisted to alter. So if I just give you a bit of a... There you go, you can see. As I twist this...
you get a different effect. So by twisting it, you end up going from smooth, which is there, see? And then noise change, and then you get that splatter. So easy. So then we just aim for, let me just move this out the way up here a little bit, because it is particularly noisy. So can you see that Hinesh okay? So if I just go, you can see how easily that just splatters all over the lily there. That's a really nice look to that actually. That looks really, really good. And that's how easy the splatter is. So you've got a lot of lilies to be splattering. You can just splatter them. You can either do them when they're all together or just individually. Whichever one works for you is fine. Everybody ends up with their own little methods and ways of doing things. So I'm 